guys and welcome back to the Central Buzz News. Today is Thursday, April 9th and the current time is 9 10 a.m. So I'm going to show you what that looks like as always on our clock. So our hour hand is on the 9 and our minute hand is on the 2. So I really like this this time just because I know that this hour hand can get kind of tricky sometimes because it tends to move closer to that next hour but when I see that it's only 9 10 I know that that hour hand still should be pointing really close to the 9 because it's only been 9 for 10 minutes this is 9 10 on our clock and I'm gonna go ahead and move on to our interesting facts for the day so the first interesting fact that I pulled out is that the shoelace, what you tie your shoe with, was invented in England in 1790. That was a long, long time ago. So we have had shoelaces for quite a while. But if you um, were alive in that time before shoelaces, all shoes were fastened with buckles. So think about a buckle on your belt. That is what you had to do with your shoes. And I know some people still have shoes that buckle uh, with a buckle, kind of like Sunday shoes or dressy shoes they still make them but just imagine all of the shoes never having shoelaces so that actually was a time when that happened um, this other fact for today I just thought was really crazy and then when I think about it it's actually not super super crazy I'm gonna tell you why in just a second but there is actually a historical museum of spaghetti in a place in Italy so I'm going to show you the little cartoon it has there of spaghetti being on display in a museum. So the reason why that's kind of funny to us here, we're like, really? Um, but Italy is actually known for its pizza and its pastas and its cheeses and things like that. So it totally makes sense if you know that about Italy. But if you don't, this is kind of funny. It's still kind of interesting. I think I'm going to look this up later because I really want to see maybe some pictures of the museum just to kind of see what a spaghetti museum would look like. So this definitely has me curious. I'm going to look that up later. So those are our facts for today. For our math concept today, instead of a word problem like we've been doing, um, I kind of wanted to just count by a certain multiple. So if you're in third grade and probably other grades as well, the numbers just might be different. We do a thing called 10 minute math and we count around the class. I don't have a class here to count around with, but I do want to just warm up just a little bit by counting by twos. I'm going to start with the multiples of two and I have a chart here that's going to help me do that. And um, I hope that if you're at home watching the newscast now, you can help me count around by twos. So I'm going to start at two, and I'm probably just going to go maybe to 50. So let's see um, how that works. And I want to, I hope that you're doing this along with me. Um, I'm going to pretend like I can hear you doing this with me. So we're going to start at two for counting by twos. Two, four, six, eight, ten. 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32, 34, 36, 38, 40, 42, 44, 46, 48, 50. So this time, I'm just going to point to the numbers and I want you to count by yourself by twos at home. So we're going to start now. Awesome. I know a lot of you guys could do that without this chart, but I just wanted to warm us up for just a second because the question, which I have two questions today, but the first one is um, normally in class, if we have 21 people in the class, I'll say, okay, if we're going to count around the room by twos, what number do we think the very last person is going to say? What number is the very first person going to say? Well, we just found out if we're counting by twos, we're going to start counting by what number? Twos, right? So thinking about what that last person would say. Now if we were counting around the rooms by ones, 
we would know that the last person would say 21 because there's 21 people. But this time we're dealing with the number two, which actually doubles that when we think about that. So I'm not going to do a 21, but I am going to ask you real quick. Um, I want you to estimate in your head. So if we have a small class of 10 people, what number do you think that 10th person is going to say if they're counting around the room by twos? So I'm going to give you just a second to figure that out. And some of you, I know a lot of you in my class especially, already know this answer and you're probably already yelling it out. So think about that for just a second and then we're going to figure out together with a strategy that I've seen a lot of my kids do in class that I think is really great. So I actually drew my 10 people. Just because if I'm not so great at counting by twos on my fingers and I really need to see it, this is a great way because I know that each of these stick people have to have two. They're going to say the number two. So what I'm going to do is I can do this two ways. I can draw two things in each one or I can just write the number two in each one or I can count by two. So a lot of people are really good at counting by twos, they just lose track. So I'm going to do it this way. Two, that second person would say four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty. So our tenth person would say twenty. So if you said that, you got the right answer. And if I was going to show this with an equation, I would say two times, because we're saying two, but we're saying it 10 times. So another strategy is you can actually do multiplication to solve that, and two times 10 is 20. So both ways, I got the answer. That's just a visual way when you're thinking about those multiples of numbers and something going that many times. That's a great way to think about a visual for that. So the next thing I'm going to do, now that we're talking about multiples for just a second, let me erase my board so that we can work this one out together. You're going to want to get ready to pause your video if you want to do this question along with us. So this is our question for today. It says, which of the following is not a multiple of two. So let's talk about multiple again. So when a number is a multiple of another number, it means we can divide it into it. We're not going to have remainders. We're going to be nice and clean and even and equal. Um, and we know that when we're counting by a certain number, if we say numbers while we're doing it, those are multiples. So all of those numbers we just said when we're counting by twos are all multiples of two. It means they work very special with two and have a special relationship with two. So thinking of that, which of the following is not, because we have to be really careful about that. A lot of the time that word not is snuck in there, so we have to make sure we're paying attention to that, is not a multiple of two. So we have some options here and I'm gonna tell you now is the point in the video where you're gonna want to hit pause. I'm gonna let you work on this for just a second. When you're ready you can unpause and we'll do it together. Alright, so I'm gonna show you how I would figure this out. So on my blank paper, which is a board, I'm going to in the corner uh, write down my choices. Um, 18, 27, 24, and 12. I'm just going to put those in a box to the side so I can know that they're there. And the strategy that I'm going to use is I'm just going to start counting by twos. One thing me and my class talked about a lot is when we're asked about multiples, the easiest way to check is to just start counting by that number to see if these guys have that special relationship with that number. So I'm going to start. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. So 18 is a multiple, which means it can't be the answer because it's asking for not a multiple. So I'm going to keep going. 20, 22, 24. So this is a multiple of 2, so that can't be 1. 24, 26, 28. Okay, well I just realized 
two things. Number one, we actually already said 12, so that one absolutely can't be it. So at this point, we only have one left, but since I didn't notice that, it's a good thing because when I got down here to 26, I automatically knew that 28 was coming next, which automatically told me 27 was not going to be included. So this would be the one that is not a multiple. So if you chose answer choice B, then that was correct. Great job, guys. So that's just a multiple reminder for you today. And for our special guest today, they're not here with me, but they are going to be showing you an activity. And they are two very special people in my life. They are my niece and my nephew. They are at home just like you. Uh, they're not in school right now, and they're doing all their work online, and they're finding things to do at home. And so this is an activity that they were doing, and I, I want to share with you. So everybody knows that Easter's coming up, and that's a, a holiday that a lot of people celebrate. And if you don't, that's totally fine too. You can do this with any kind of shape that you want to draw to try to hunt. So if you've been on an Easter egg hunt, you will kind of know how this goes. Some of us may not have eggs at home uh, quite yet because we're staying at home, and so we might not have those things. So what my niece and nephew and I did was we took some paper and we just drew our own little Easter eggs here. These are mine, just to show you as an example. And inside are numbers, except for this last one. I would have to add there. Um, but what my niece and nephew are doing is they made their own Easter eggs they put a value on each egg. So like my biggest egg would be worth 100 points. So if somebody found this one, that would be really good for them. This egg is only 10. So after um, my niece and nephew cut all of these out, they actually had their mom hide them for them. And they, uh, she said to go and they went and they searched for them as fast as they could to see how many they could find. And when they were done, then they opened all of their eggs, they might have been folded up or they just looked at their eggs and they actually added up all the points on all the eggs they found to see who the winner was. So that's a really fun way to do an egg hunt since you can't really go out and do Easter egg hunts right now. You can do this with your brother or sister or a family member, somebody that lives with you that would want to compete with you and see how many that you could find. And it also helps you practice your math a little bit because you have to add up all of your points. So that's a really awesome way to um, practice and have a fun activity. So they are going to show you how to do that. So I'm going to uh, turn that over to them next. And lastly, I just want to remind everyone um, that on Friday starts our Easter break. So that's uh, called Good Friday. And I'm actually going to be doing a special Easter read aloud on Good Friday. And that will be posted on our Best Mercy Central uh, Facebook page. So if you don't follow the Best Mercy Central Elementary Facebook page, get your parents to go there and find our school page so you can follow it because you'll be able to see read alouds that get posted every single day from all kinds of different teachers that work in our building, not just the teachers, but the guidance counselors and Miss Black, our principal. So just make sure that if your parents do not follow that page to do that, I'll also post the special Easter read aloud on my YouTube channel here where you find the news. So make sure you check into that and I'm going to let you check out this Easter egg hunt um, activity competition and I hope you guys get to play it at home. One, two, three. Go find them. <laughs> Thank you. I already found an egg. <gasps> oh my gosh, is there any more? Okay, are you going to give us hint through, hint through the thing? No, you just know that you have to find five. Let's see. 
I got four. You better hurry up. Hey, are they over oh. here? Look on the floor too. Look on the ground too. Mommy said look on the ground. Huh. Did you hide one in Izzy? No. Is there any more down there? Oh, we have to add them up.